the same question that, that I asked you. Just how fun is that in overtime game on the line and they just call your number and you guys are able to just chunk plays, chunk plays, and then obviously get it in there at the end? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I'll be honest. I hate overtime. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a late game. I'm going to see my son, but um, we got there and, you know, uh, Coach Campbell is always big on saying, like, whenever your number call and whenever you get an opportunity to be sure that you strike when you when it does get called. So I was being ensuring ins myself that I, whenever I got the opportunity, I would take full advantage of it. So um, my old line did the whole last drive. It was none of me. And, you know, the wide receivers do what they do yeah, all the time. And, you know, Jared facilitates everything. So it was good that it worked out. How fresh did you feel late in the game? And conversely, can you feel the other team? Yeah, um, I feel real fresh, um, honestly. Um, we got a good thing going here with me and Ja, you know, going back and forth, and, um, you know, saving each other's energy because we're going to need um, both of us throughout the whole entire year um, in order for us to go on a run. Um, but, yeah, that's a good team over there. I'll be honest. They gave us everything that they had, and we didn't play our cleanest ball, and we'll be better, um, obviously. But, like I said, I'm just happy we came out with a win. Uh, yeah, it was good. I think um, I'd have been around the block a couple times, you know, going into my sixth camp um, and kind of knowing how it looks and how it goes and being sure that I, you know, take advantage of everything that's in front of me. Um, you know, I know what I'm capable of ultimately, and I know exactly what this team and this offense is capable of. And if I don't go out there with my best foot forward, I feel like I'm letting them down and letting myself down also. So. I was sure to keep myself at a high standard. And I think for me, myself personally, like I raised my standard every chance that I get. So um, yeah, I just was trying to take every uh, opportunity um, the best that I could. On the touchdown to, to end the game, you ran right through that guy. How good does it feel to, to just end the game in that way? No, no, it was, no, it was good. <laughs> it, was, it felt good, yeah. It was a good play, fun play. Once you got rolling in overtime, did you think there was any way they were going to stop it? Oh, nah, N nothing against them. I was in the mold, though. I was already locked in at that point where, um, you know, felt like I had to prove myself to myself. You know, I felt like that was the the greatest opportunity for it to happen, for me to showcase, um, you know, what I'm capable of, but at the same time, showing how much grit that that offense and this team has. So, um, you know, being able to go out and close it out, like I said, my O-line, like, come on now, like, best O-line in the league. And you got them boys outside of me um, blocking the way that they block. And, you know, like I said, you got uh, JG facilitating everything. So, like I said, I'm just excited we got the win. I noticed at the end of the game you went to the opposite end zone and just kind of had it, took a moment there. What, what was kind of going through your head there? What, is that something you normally do at the end of the game? Oh, yeah, I do that every game. Win, loss, or draw, you know. You know, at the end of the day, <laughs> um, this game is so important to me, and I put everything into it. But I also know that without God, I am nothing, and with God, I'm everything. And um, being sure that I, I give him all the praise and the glory when things are going good, when things are going bad, and you know when things are indifferent. Um, because at the end of the day, this is, this game is amazing, but I can't do it without him. Just one more. The term closer role, you know, is, is it? Can you just describe what that, that feeling is like to be the, um, for lack of a better word, like the he-man? You know, like I can take on anything. I am the strongest man at the end of the day, running through people when everyone else is sort of, you know, exhausted at the end of the game. What, what does it just feel like to you to be that person? That Oh, I definitely don't feel like the heat, man. I just feel like I was doing my job, you know. Um, I mean, I'm here to, to do a job a certain way, and um, I feel like if I didn't do that, I would be doing a complete disservice to myself and to the team. So um, there was no he man in me. There was no superpower, no special human strength or none of that. It was just uh, me staying within the lines of the game, um, trusting what I see, um, allowing the boys up front to do what they do best, and uh, everybody else around me to do what they do best. And, um, you know, me just stay within the scheme of the game, and I feel like I did that. So I don't think I, I, I was no he-man by any means. When you say uh, two more, my, I need to prove myself to myself, can you expand on that? What do you mean by that phrase? What does that mean to you? Um, the phrase is the phrase. I won't, I won't say anything more about it because it's more for me than anybody else. David, when it comes to how you're able to, like you said, just do your job and focus on the game and it's not superhuman, how much does it help when you have guys like Amon Ra who know they're not getting the targets but are blocking for you, or behaving that way? Yeah, you know, Saint is a, he's a special, special specimen, right? And um, his mentality is so contagious, right? And um, 
games like this where um, we're not being not able to get him the ball successfully, um, you know, he still leads. Um, and then be able to have that, you know, knowing that he is that guy and when the when crunch time come, we want to go to him. And, you know, this game in particular, we weren't able to do that. And, you know, him to still come up big and block and being who he is, that shows his character and what kind of guy he is. You know, he's a team guy. Um, he got love for everybody on his team. And, you know, he showcased that, even when the ball's not in his hands. David, I don't know if you fell victim to it at all, but it just seemed like guys were slipping all over the place tonight. Was there a slippery out there? Was there anything with the turf that you noticed? Yeah, I definitely was slipping. Um, got to get my feet under me, play more on my toes. Um, that can't be an excuse to why I slipped. I just got to be sure that I get my feet under me, and um, I'll do that. Was the turf okay, though? Uh, the turf okay? Yeah, it was good. Cool. Thanks, guys. Yep. Thanks, guys. I ain't never did this before. So, guys, we've heard all night. You're all spoke off season about how much you've improved, and we saw it you know, uh, quite a bit in the summer, but to have it come to fruition on a night like this, the first game of the season, what did it mean to you? Um, it means a lot, you know. I put in a lot of work. Um, not just this year, it's been continuous work ever since, like, you know, since I got in the league. And it's just been, this is just a time to show it. You know, it's the first game. Um, it's, it's just a start, though. We got 16 more in the regular season, playoffs. We got a lot more ball to play, so it's just a start. It was kind of a quiet game for, for St. Brown and LaPorta. How good does it feel knowing that the offense can lean on you? Um, that's just our offense, um, and we we knew that from the jump that we got we got stars, we got ball players. You know, one person don't don't get going, we got other people to lean on. You know, um, the offense just shout out to Ben. You know, he 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 called the right plays, and he he know he know the right thing, right situations to put us in. You know, um, they was out there like uh, in and out St. Brown a lot, double teaming them a lot, and you know somebody else had to make plays, and I just made the plays when my number was called. Jameson, it seems like we've continued to ask you over the last couple of years. Do you feel like you're breaking out? Do you feel like you're breaking out? Is this a night starting year three where you kind of told the football world that you are here to be an NFL star? Um, yeah, I, I also didn't feel like I was an NFL star. You know, um, it's just, it's just, it's just now it's, it's showing. Um, I don't look at this as no, no, no different game. You know, it's um, just the beginning. It's the first game of the season. I got a lot more in me though. That was real valuable to me. Um, I think to to the team too, and, and to golf. You know, we got a real great connection over the over the spring and the summer. Throwing, we threw a couple times in practice. Um, we threw a couple times in LA. You know, so it, was, it just translated, and, and the hard work is just finally showing. You know, um, not not with just me, with the whole team. You know, we just that was a hard game to win. You know, the Rams was a good team. And the defense helped out a lot of special teams. Everybody came together, you know. We just played to the last seconds of the game. So um, I would say it, it, it feels good, you know, no, knowing that the hard work is paying off. But we got a lot, a lot more to go. You take history, the, the touchdown looked like you sold the hits. Maybe you just took off and grabbed you. Couldn't, couldn't get enough either. Yeah. Um, it, it, was, it, was, it was a play we, we, we had. We, we knew who we was going to run it on. And we, we, we had that in, in, in motion uh, early in the week. So. We worked on it a couple times, you know, and you caught in the game. Whoever we say, whoever get whoever get the pass, it's it's a mirror play, so it's both sides. So you know, whoever win, get the ball. Did it feel like the playoff game last year? Maybe um, year? yes, yes, I would say that because um, uh, you know, the playoff game last year ended 23-24, if I'm not mistaken. It came down to the last seconds, just like this one. This one actually went further; it went to overtime. Um, like I said, the Rams was a good team, and and. and they played real great ball today, and I, I just feel like we played better and we came out on top because, you know, that's, that's what Coach preached to us, you know, grit. And we go we go all the way till it's done, and, you know, we're going to finish. It seemed like guys were slipping all over the place. Can you just maybe speak to the, the field conditions? Was, did it feel slippery out there at all? Um, not to me, not to me. I, I wouldn't say it was slippery, but, you know, um, it's first game, you know, being on turf for a lot of us. You know, we didn't, some of us didn't play in the preseason, so we just, like, Getting back to the turf field, we practice on grass a lot, so that may be a thing. Um, I'm not really sure about the turf. I, I think it was okay. I, I, I don't. I don't really know. I I ain't slip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dan, Dan said of your performance that one of the best things about it was it wasn't even your best game. Do you feel like there's still? Oh yeah, for sure. This just this just game one. Um, like I said, I put in a lot of work. Um, I expected to have a big game. You know. Um, me personally, I expect to have a big game. I guess I guess this is just big to the world, um, just because it's my first one. 
but I, I plan to have a lot more, you know. Um, I, I don't plan on this being my best game of my career. I plan on this just being the starter, starter, you know, me me being me. When was the last time you got a game ball? Game ball? I never got a game ball. Not at Bama, not at nowhere. I ain't even going to lie. This right here, it might not leave my hands. I might sleep like this. <laughs> Speed, not just your speed, but Gibbs, you know, like you have a lot of speed on offense. Yeah. Offense. Just what does that do to a defense? How does that do? Um, I think it scares the defense a lot because you know it, it has a lot of it has a lot of way. We have a lot of ways to stretch the field. Um, you know, you can get a ball to Gibbs, and he can get it. He can move the chains. You can get a ball to anybody. We can, they can move the chains T from the tight ends to the running backs to the receivers. You know, even golf. You seen he got down there and he got the first down for us. So. You know, uh, I don't really think it's about speed. I think it's about playmaking. Um, you know, um, we come down to who can make the plays, and we make plays. Um, not just me, Saint. Everybody make plays. So I would be. I would say the, the, it wouldn't be the speed. It would be the playmaking. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Jerry. Danny coming alive. And, you know, the game's on the line. That's the type of player he is, and you know, we can rely on him. You know, in those situations. More challenging. I haven't seen guys on tape. I mean, they had a lot of new guys there to sort of cycle in there. Yeah, I mean, yeah, to a certain extent, yeah. I think that, um, you know, they ran a couple different wrinkles than what we've seen in, on film. But um, at the end of the day, that's what you expect week one. And, um, you know, they, they we did stuff that they didn't know we were going to do either. So it kind of goes both ways. When it comes to a lot of rookies had their big debuts here tonight, yeah. what did you see out of Terrion Arnold? Obviously things to learn, but he also had some big plays as well. Yeah, he had some big plays. Obviously, um, you know, kind of thing, you know, just those PIs were, you know, he's probably pissed off about that, but that's part of being a rookie and they're going to go after him. And, um, you know, this is the NFL and it's an offensive, it's an offensive league and that's what they're, they're going to call all the time. It's not, it's not the same as in college. And, you know, he'll grow and get better from it. And like we said, you came out from the jump. Was there a point when you realized, oh, this is going to be a really hot game for me? Like, I'm just all over their stuff. You're hitting every mark. Was there a point where you realized that, or you don't focus on that in game? No, I just take it a play at a time. I kind of, you know, expect that of myself every game. And, um, you know, some games those splash plays are going to come, but, you know, this, I had a few of them. So, um, you know, it's fun to play week one in this, in this atmosphere. From a defensive perspective, how do you feel when an offensive line does what you guys did in overtime? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great feeling. I think that we all got a sense of what they were, you know, they were tired, um, their defense, that is. And, um, you know, I said this to the media this week at the podium. I think that Dave is one of the hardest running backs in the league to tackle, and uh, he runs behind his pads, but he's also shifty too. So, um, you know, he's a great running back, and we can rely on the, him in those situations. It's got to feel demoralizing, I mean, when they just impose a will like that. Yeah, 100%. It's, it's, it's good to run the football in this league. We're just happy to get the, get the win. And to start with the week one dub, just setting the tone for what's next, how important is that to build momentum? I think it's super important. Um, starting 1-0 is big. You know, it's starting on the, on, on the good side. We've got to keep, up, keep the momentum going. Um, we've got a pretty good team ne next week in Tampa, but we've got to watch the film, correct some things. Definitely a lot to correct after week one. Uh, and, and hopefully, you know, we get better next week. When Dan talks about finishing, the way you guys finish today, how much time does that give you guys going, you know, in the next week? A bunch. Um, you know, like like Demo said at the end in the locker room, no one wants to go to no one wants to go to overtime. Uh, we'd rather finish it early, but if we got to do it, we got to do it. You know, we won the toss, and once we got out there, we knew this was time for our offense to, to end the game, and that's what we did. So, kudos to the O line, everyone, Demo, Jameer. Um, tight ends, receivers, man, they, they, did, they did their thing. Could you just talk about Dave Montgomery? He was like a man possessed out there yeah, in the overtime. He's a beast. Um, you know, we all know what, Dave, what David can do, uh, his ability. He's hard to tackle, um, shifty at 230, has great feet. So, you know, when you have a back like that, him and Jameer, um, that you can rotate and feed, and, and they, you know, once they start getting hot, it, they're tough to stop. So, um, super happy for, for Demo, man. He's, he's worked his tail off all camp. He deserves all this. And we know what you do, but talk about Jameson Williams too, and how he came, and the trust is now there. Like yeah, he 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 had his, uh, I believe his first hundred yard game. Yeah. So I'm super excited for him. Super proud of him. He uh, he balled out. I knew it was gonna happen. Uh, he's been doing great. You know, all OTAs, all camp. But um, yeah, I think he, you know, he's he's sticking with it. He's he's listening to coaches, listening to you know the teammates. Um, we're all supporting him. He's. You know, bought in. He's fully bought yeah. into everything. You can tell out there. He's having fun, um, and he's he's a heck of a player. First, give me your 
your overall impressions of just the crowd tonight and, and the way you guys came out here at Port Field? Yeah, didn't disappoint. Incredible atmosphere. Um, fun to still hear the Jared Goff chants. Uh, I think that gets us all rocking, and they were they were definitely rocking when they were on third down, so it was a great environment. Give me a sense of what was going through your guys' mind when you got to that overtime and, and you guys got in that huddle. Talk to me a little bit about how your quarterback settled things down and set the tone. I think it was just a, the mindset. Everybody in the huddle was like, hey, let's go win this thing. Let's leave no doubt. Let's go do what we do and let's go finish it. And then David was a man possessed. He was a man possessed. I mean, this is a guy who runs hey, with a chip. over for Graham? Sorry. No, 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 no. Sorry about that. Oh, okay. Graham. Hi, Graham. Welcome to the interview. Um, runs with a chip on his shoulder. Certainly you guys love kind of that put your head down and, and pave the way for him. Talk about that mentality. You guys really started the game that way. Yeah, he's incredible. I mean, I can't say enough about the guy. He runs so angry. And uh, I feel like it's never the first guy there. It's always the third, fourth, fifth. And uh, to block for a guy like that is a blessing. Give me a sense of early on. You guys had some trouble. I mean, they put some pressure on you guys defensively. What kind of adjustments were you guys able to make to keep Jared clean and give him time? Yeah, we knew going into it there was going to be a lot of unknowns. Uh, a lot of players that weren't on tape, didn't play in the preseason, new coordinator. So we knew they were going to throw something at us. So it took us a while there to adjust and figure it out. And I think we got in a rhythm there at the end. Was this a little bit of a statement game? I mean, this one felt kind of like all business coming back after the playoff win against them. But how good was it just to get back in the win column after the way last season ended? And you guys have waited a long time and mm -hmm. talked about just building the momentum. Yeah, win's a win, uh, especially in this league. Every, every win's hard. And uh, we knew uh, it wasn't going to be the most perfect game, and uh, we found a way to finish it, and that's what good teams do. And when you talk about those Jared Goff chants, I mean, the fans were crazy from the beginning. What is it about Jared that you guys love so much, and what did he show you tonight? I don't know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, he's just the same guy every day, very consistent, um, plays with a lot of poise. Uh, you know what you're getting, and... Uh, obviously really, really talented. Does the crowd amaze you from the standpoint, like when you think it's loud, it even gets louder. Like there's different like levels of loudness from that. Thing. For sure, and the consistency to, able to be able to bring it every third down, every crucial situation is pretty impressive. When you guys were up by 17 points, you knew they weren't going to go away. You watch Matthew Stafford on the other side. For sure. And to see your defense perform the way that they did in crucial moments, how important was that? Yeah, I felt like they had our back a lot all game, especially when we started off slow. They uh, they came up with a lot of crucial plays, and uh, that's what it's all about in this league, complimentary football. And I feel like we were, although it was ugly, we were able to find a way to play that. Winning ugly, though, is something you guys talked about last year. I mean, it's it's part of your identity, is it not? Yeah, for sure. A win's a win in this league. Uh, it's, it's as tough as it gets, and to be able to find out, find out, finish out with a W in the column, you can't be mad. It, uh, it, it helped the defense tremendously. How do you feel that you played in your first career professional? I feel like I played all right. Uh, normally, me, like even on those corner balls, uh, like that corner ball, I was really mad at myself because I feel like I could have turned in and made that play, and that would have been a big momentum shifter. But uh, as far as that, like just short play mentality. Uh, those PIs, uh, I hold myself to a high standard, so I felt like those kind of hurt our team a little bit, but I take full accountability of it. And, uh, I'm going uh, to get to the drawing board and um, get better. You learn from that, right? I mean, most kind of mistakes you never want to repeat again. Yeah, of course. Like, I mean, it's football. As a cornerback, yeah. you know, you got the toughest task. Just go out there and uh, Cooper Cup, he's a, he's a very great player. So, I mean, me guarding him even after the game, coming up to him, and he's like, yeah, man, you won them one. So, uh, it was a great game, great matchup going against him, and uh, I liked it. Any I mean, butterflies? That kind of compliment from you know one of the game's better receivers. Um, I mean I know I'm one of them ones. Like I know I'm a great player. I go out there and play with confidence, and it just uh, it's just a testament to uh, my hard work, but also a testament you know to our our, our pass rush, man. Like, they do a really really great job of getting back there affecting the quarterback, and uh, even me uh, getting mad at Carlton Davis. I was like, man, we get gifts like that. We gotta come, we gotta uh, we gotta uh, get those. But uh, you know even uh, him. Just knowing that I got him on the other side of me to uh, challenge me, to push me, and help me become a better player it helps me a lot. When you're those DPIs really quick, just, you know, they're, they're a little bit touchier, I guess, in the NFL. Was that eye-opening at all, just how tight they call it for, for DBs in this league? Um, Honestly not. Yeah. just feel like I could have been better with my hands, just looking back for the ball. And, uh, you know, those are plays that I got to look up, take the risk of looking at the ball and make those plays. So, yeah. yeah. What do you think when you, you're on the sideline watching David Montgomery do what he did? Man, Man Demo. I always say this, man, he's a man child. And uh, everybody should know this, like that video that went viral, him squatting all that weight, man. And, I mean, not squatting, but deadlifting all that weight, you just know, man, like 
that's a freight train coming through. So when he just pounded the ball down the field, I wasn't surprised because, I mean, I know uh, our team is full of grit. And when it comes down to those big moments and those big plays, we prepare for moments like that. So I've seen him do that in practice. Did you have any butterflies? I mean, you're such a confident guy. Any butterflies to start? Of course. I mean, I'm human. <laughs> I'm going to get butterflies, but uh, I've been getting them my whole life. I feel like if I don't get those, then something is wrong. So, like, going into that and then being able to run out of the tunnel and just feeling that emotion right there, it let me know, like, I've been playing this game since a kid, and uh, I'm going to play this game for a very long time, continue to improve, and uh, become a, a big-time star in this league. Speaking of emotion, what's it like being on the field defensively and hearing that crowd for a big play? I mean, it's almost like there's different levels of noise they're able to bring. Well, uh, Brian Branch, he told me it was louder than Alabama, and I didn't believe him. <laughs> so uh, when I felt like my ear is actually, like, shaking, that's when I said, oh, wow, like, this is, this is amazing. And then just running out of that tunnel right there, it was almost like I couldn't, like, I couldn't hear nothing. And I won't say like my like my head was shaking, but I kind of felt like a like an outer body experience. Uh, an outer body experience. I was just like, wow. I felt like I was in a movie. So I mean, that crowd, man, it's it's nothing like it. So, so it's louder than Tuscaloosa. Way louder. Yeah, way louder. And way you didn't louder. Think that was possible. Nah. And Tuscaloosa was the, the loudest place you've been up to this point. Nah, Texas ain't no. Okay. Yeah. But this was louder than Texas ain't no. Way louder. <laughs> <laughs> like way louder. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, man.